Let's study all the possibilities of the timeline of Calipeg. The timeline is located at the bottom of your interface. You can have many layers in it, many types of layers we will see later. Long touch and slide to open or close. With that icon here, you can tap to hide and display your timeline. The numbers at the top represent the number of frames. You can decide to start your animation on 0 or 1 in the settings. General, start counting frames at 0 or 1. In the general tab of the settings, you can also define the language of your interface. It can be Chinese, English, French or Japanese. When you change the language, you have to restart the app for it to be applied. You can see here, I have numbers, so I know that here it's one second because it's 24 and I'm in a 24 FPS shot, which I can change at any time. But you can decide to display time instead of frames. In the settings here, timeline, tap, and here you go to time for the timeline metric. And now it's one second dot zero zero image. I personally set it to frame unless I'm making an animatic from a storyboard. If your shot is 1920 by 1080 pixels or less, the thumbnails are displayed. And you can go in the settings, timeline, and disable that option. So it's not there anymore, which can save a bit of memory. You can add a new frame in your layer by tapping that icon here. It will create a sheet just next to the current one. And by default, it's one frame long. But you can define it here, settings, timeline. For example, here I want to create new drawings two frames long. And now it's two frames long by default. You can also choose to highlight different values. Here it's 12, so I have 0, 12, 24, 36, and so on. But I can go here, timeline, and for example, highlight every 6 frames. If I zoom out, I will see less numbers. And if I zoom in, I will see more. And if you want to see everything all the time, you just tap 1. And then when you zoom in, you have each number. But at any time, you always see the number of your current frame. You can scrub in the timeline with a single finger. If you add two fingers and pinch in or out, it will zoom in or out. You can flip with three fingers on the canvas. And if the timeline is hidden, you will see that line here. You can find options at the bottom of the timeline. You can always long touch to see what it does. For example, here it's push neighbors. So if I select a sheet, it will push the neighbors. The same goes for multiple sheets. But if I tap here, it won't push the neighbors anymore. So I can compress it, but not extend it, which could be useful if you don't want to change your timing. I go back to push neighbors and here you have the magnet icon. It will be better to understand if we have some gaps. If I'm on the push neighbors behavior and if I select several sheets, it will extend until the next sheet and then push. But if I activate the magnet, it will push and keep the gaps. I disable it, I go to not push neighbors. So here it just does that. And if I'm on not push neighbors with the magnet, it just won't be possible to extend or compress the sheets. You put that when you just don't want to move anything in your timeline and just draw. And what about empty spaces here? If I tap again on push neighbors, I unselect my selection by tapping. And now if I long touch on the magnet, it will remove empty spaces and move the sheets backwards. Like that. If I have a selection, it will do the same but only on that selection. If I do the same but with don't push neighbors, long touch on the magnet, it will extend my drawing sheets until the next ones to also remove empty spaces. And the same goes 
for the selections. Quick summary here. Push neighbors, magnetize. It will remove empty spaces by moving everything next. And don't push neighbors, long touch on the magnet. It will extend to remove the gaps. I go back to my initial animation with some undos and go back to push neighbors. Then we have the icons here. The first one will reset your timeline scale and position and go back to the start. The second one here will zoom to the position of your current frame. And the last one will adjust the timeline to fit all the contents in the layer or a specific selection. Flipping is an important part of 3D animation. You can flip in the floating menu, long touch to fingers and flip. You can flip by scrubbing here on the timeline. You can also flip with the keyboard and we will have a specific part on the keyboard shortcuts. And you can decide on what to flip to. In the settings, flip. You can define your flip style on frames, sheets or markers. I will add a few markers, double tap, marker, double tap, marker. If I set the flip to frames, I will flip on single frames. That drawing sheet, for example, here, will need four until I go to the other pose. Flipping on sheets means that it will flip head to head. And the markers means that it will flip from marker to marker. So here only three. You can define to invert the flip. By default, when you go up, it will go to the next frames. But if you invert, when you go up, it will go backwards. And last, the flip sensitivity. If you put it way high, it will be extremely sensible. And if you put it way low, the movement you will have to do to go from a frame to another will be very long. So you can set it here, depending on your preferences. Your flip style here will also be applied on those icons. So you can go from one sheet to another. Or one frame to another. Or one marker to another. In the sidebar, you can also go to the first frame or the final one. If the onion skin is enabled, you can choose in the settings timeline to enable or disable scrubbing disabled onion skin. So if it's enabled, when I scrub, I won't see the onion skin. And now I see it. And if I disable it, I will see the onion skin all the time. Just as a reminder, you double tap to select one drawing sheet. And to select several, you do a tap and then a tap and drag. When you have one or several sheets selected, you can see the action panel. From here, you can delete your selection. You can copy the content of a drawing sheet, unselect with a tap, and then paste it on another one. You can duplicate your sheets with the content. So here it will be duplicated next to my selection. It also works here, for example. I can also select one or several sheets, long touch on the duplicate with content and drag it anywhere. And it works the same way with a duplicate without content. You can also duplicate at the linked sheet, double tap, tap here, and then those two here will be linked together. So if I draw here, it will be drawn on the other one. We will see more about the linked sheets and the cycles later in the video. You can set the duration of a selection. Here I tap on the timing icon here. You can hold and choose for example, four or six, and you can also tap 
and enter a value. You can split your selection, hold and choose, for example on two, and it will divide all the content of your selection in sheets with the duration you choose. You can invert a selection with that icon here. You can add an in-between structure. There, I want to do in-betweens, here and here. I tap in-between and it will create empty sheets in the middle of two others. And if you want to keep your timing, remember that you can just split bottom to up to create empty sheets. You can also double tap to create a new sheet and then tap on import. Import a photo here and then transform it before applying. And that way you can import images directly inside a drawing sheet. If you select several sheets ending on the same position, you can extend or compress them. When several sheets are selected, you also have access to the create cycle icon. And I will explain how to make an animation loop with cycles in another part of the video. And at any point, just tap on the eye to have every info about what the icon does.